let's have a quick look at the list of big telecom companies uh, in the world and their market size and in terms of uh, their business profile uh, we'll have a look uh, at them and compare it with what how the uh, tent wireless is trying to play a uh, role in the telecom industry so if you look at the um, the telecom industry as a whole that just the top 10 telecom companies in the world uh, by market value is worth more than 1 trillion actually so if you look at uh, the first one on the top is uh, the Verizon Communications from USA which is worth 201 billion and you have AT&T uh, with roughly around 198 billion and then you have China Mobile and then you have Nippon Telegraph and Telephone from Japan and then we have a SoftBank, Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone, then Telefonica, Spain, Orange, and China Telecom. So, so this just gives an idea of perspective of how big the telecom market is. So when I say telecom market, it includes infrastructure, providing, there is, they have a wide range of products, not just selling mobile data alone. So they have a wide range of other products they sell uh, bulk data to other MENOs as well. So they get a, a revenue from multiple streams, not just um, C2C, which is customer to customer business alone. So all these big telecom companies, they don't do just customer to customer uh, mobile data selling, but they have uh, products which are catered for other businesses as well. So that's where they make a big chunk of money. So they have a wide distributed portfolio for revenue more generation so not just dependent on only one uh, one store of value which is just selling mobile data to customers end customers so it's not just c2c they have b2b uh, products as well so that's where they make a huge um, product so if a telecom company has to sustain and play a big role uh, in the whole industry they need to have a spread out of their revenue model so that's what Dent is exactly trying to do. So if you look at the recent uh, roadmap, they are very clearly uh, taking that route of what big telecoms do. So the big telecoms normally they want to have a big chunk of some some sort of direct customer to customer sales as well. So which is Dent is already doing it via its mobile app and then eSIM products as well, and then. They have something called Dent Teams, which is pretty much like Skype business, Skype for business, where they target business use, users. Um, and Dent Teams is perfectly positioned for that. And then they have retail market as well, which is basically Dent Giga store for resellers. So you can get a small chunk of uh, Dent um, data and then sell it as through retail outlets as well. And then Dent is trying to target other businesses as well so these two products are targeted for business to business so and the cloud stack is quite interesting so now Dent wants other MENOs to use Dent as their platform Dent platform on the cloud so that is pretty interesting as well and then they have this IOT internet of things as well so basically if you compare with what the big telecoms do and what the strategy that Dent is taking right now is quite analogical and you can clearly see that um, even just the top 10 telecoms is, is so massive but remember they didn't achieve all those success and this much amount of revenue into, uh, just in uh, three years or five years span of time it took quite a lot of time um, to get to that state so if you look for example um, another competitor which is Truephone which is also another MENO um, so I took one of the MUNO for um, just for analysis and it's not any financial advice or um, any uh, criticism about the products they have. It's just a, a, a Wikipedia article which I want to go through. So this Truephone was founded in uh, 2006 um, and then their annual revenue is roughly around 38 million in revenue which was uh, I think around 2017 they made the announcement so basically the, that's that's the history of their um, of their complete timeline 
and we know dent was formed um, in 2017 2017 and it's a three or three year old company so i guess from looking at the business strategy that they are doing they are trying to um, position uh, themselves as a big player in the long run then if you look at another big um, meno player which is called gifgaf so they have a um, of a 449 million annual revenue and they were formed in 2009 I suppose yeah they were launched on 2009 and then um, it took roughly around 11 years for them to get a half a billion uh, in revenue so remember the advantage that Dent has is, is double-sided so if they have a foot on the telecom industry which is quite massive as I showed you which just the top 10 telecom companies they are worth in trillions actually so so they have a foot on the telecom industry by uh, becoming an MENO themselves and then they have, have launching a multiple suits of products targeted for different business customers so so dent for team dent teams and then dent giga store and then the dent cloud stack they all are targeted for big um, telecom customers attract more cus tele, um, business users to start using Dent as their platform basically so so given the time that they have just started as an you know just eight months ago they started in January 2020 until then they were just dependent on third party Acuito uh, uh, it's a provider who they buy bulk uh, data from Acuito and then they sell it on their Dent mobile app that was the case since um, end of 2019 but from January 2020 the the, the the landscape completely changed for Dent Wireless they started becoming an MVNO themselves they might have probably realized that the, the mobile telecom companies are they allowed to operate in silo and want to make a big chunk of um, uh, the profits themselves rather than having a, a standardized interoperable platform where customers could get benefit, consumers could get in, consumers could get benefited, and most of the telecom companies that I uh, showed you at the moment, they don't have even, they are very reluctant to move to eSIM actually. So most of the telecom companies they are slow to the transition from the plastic SIM card era to the eSIM era, but that's not going to be um, long uh, that's going to change pretty soon uh, because there's quite a lot of MENOs coming out who are eSIM focused so that's going to be a big uh, focus in the next three to five years and Dent being an MENO just eight months old company um, given the time I think they, they are going to position themselves very well as a very good competitor for other telecom companies uh, in the world so just for example you can see gifcaf alone is 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 11 year old company and they don't even have eSIM offering as well and they don't do iot of things all they do is just uh, selling mobile data to end uh, it's just c to c platform there's not much uh, b2b there without b2b just c to c customer to customer and no business to not much of uh, business to business offering this this M, you know, is doing pretty well and they have 500 close to 449 million in revenue so what I'm trying to highlight here is with these comparisons that Dent is entering that space of uh, big MENOs and we can expect uh, that Dent could potentially attract quite a lot of customers in the future so once they have um, uh, a numbered eSIM because at the moment the eSIM offering that Dent makes for their customers is just only for mobile data uh, and they are, they have to still rely on another um, SIM based uh, for SIM card for their primary SIM card for their mobile number so when Dent launches their own um, eSIM with a numbered eSIM that could change this landscape much better so uh, one of the key milestones in Q4 2020 is uh, to develop a prototype of Dent eSIM with an embedded telephone number so that is quite interesting as well so from all this perspective you can see that now they started as a normal MENO with just an eSIM 
and mobile data offering and then now they are transitioning to um, try a prototype and try a telephone numbered uh, eSIM as well so that is pretty interesting uh, thing that they are trying because at the moment there's not much prepaid um, telecom companies which offer eSIM uh, with the numbers at the moment with the number at the moment so probably that's going to change as well in the future but uh, Tent is trying to uh, get into that space so once they have a numbered eSIM the, the, the option for people to try is quite high because now you have a, a numbered SIM eSIM with mobile data offering and on top of that in free international call voice call uh, as well through the dent mobile app so all these join together um, dent could uh, position themselves pretty well uh, in the near future and even if you look at um what gift so they started uh, in 2009 and they started their um big uh, marketing campaigns only in after three years of launch they didn't start doing the marketing immediately because they want to make sure they have a very solid product uh, in their hands well tested uh, at in the c2c customer to customer arena very well before they uh, take it to a big bigger market for b2b so that's the reason dent has been very reluctant uh, to go on a full-fledged marketing uh, strategy but that is going to change in 2021 so Dent is planning to have a full-blown marketing uh, done for their products so at the moment their focus is to get their products polished and stabilized with no bugs and enough trial being done with uh, using their existing 25 million users on the mobile app and that way they can uh, have a very stable product for business customers as well so that's why they have been reluctant to get into the um, marketing space so we might lots of people have been asking why dent has been not transparent in what they do uh, and there's been quite a lot of fear and doubt um, in the community at the moment but think about this all these big companies they never talk about what they do they're not they don't have a telegram channel they don't have a chat service where they go into end customers and say what they do every quarterly they they do everything silo most of the telecom companies they never announce pre-announce what they do that's the reason they have been so successful and been taking a quite a lot of chunk of profits to their profit to their pockets so dent uh, assuming they have enough competitors on the market it would be really foolish to pre-announce anything uh, just because the community um, uh, wants the updates very frequently that's that's not the um, best of uh, strategy to do because if you look at these all these big companies they never pre-announce what they are going to do in the future they kept everything secret even if you look at apple apple never reveals uh, what they are going to do until uh, the day of the announcement even the you can't get rumors of it as well so that way they uh, they were able to uh, acquire a, uh, to get, win the competitors very easily so dent uh, i don't think so dent is hiding anything here as a business as their roadmap is pretty clear sound and solid and it shows uh, lots of uh, uh, good things that they are targeting in the near future for the next one year so from my opinion dent is very transparent company it's a legitimate company and they have a uh, very good professional um, ethic of implementing and announcing only when they achieve something uh, and they don't want to create um, speculation on and rumors what they want to do is what they want to do is they want to launch solid business products which attracts more customers and that way the product becomes more attractive to the end users in the end of the day it's the adoption of the users which makes dent uh, more valuable it's not just speculators the speculators are very le less concerned now because they are going to uh, drop the price of dent token very quickly because we you know there's lots of market makers and uh, individuals with a huge amount of dead tokens in their wallets and they're trying to manipulate the price dent wireless is a solid company focused on not on the speculators 
what the speculators do is up to them but dent as a company is solid uh, focus on attracting more customers and bring adoption at a bigger scale pretty much what vodafone and big companies have been doing historically in the past so in the future i guess dent is is going to have a very good um number of customers uh, using dent e sim so let's wait and watch and let's see uh, what's going on in the next one year thanks thanks for watching